Hello everybody, it's Sarah and since we are now in April, it is time to talk about what I read back in March. I have hiccups. But before we're doing that, we're gonna do my TBR char pose because last time I almost forgot them and I don't want to do that again. However, only one of the two will be a TBR char poll because for my read around the world challenge for May, because I'm always like pulling a month ahead basically because a lot of the books that I want to read for the challenge or countries, books for certain countries are quite hard to come by for me and it often takes multiple weeks. So I always do it a month ahead. And since May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, History Month, I am gonna do a random Asian country generator, which obviously doesn't include the Pacific Islands. Maybe actually I'll just do a country for both and then just see for which country the book or I can find a book more easily. So let's start with the random Asian country generator. So for Asian country, the country that came up was Iraq and I might, because it's been on my TBR for a while and I know Scylla read it recently and really enjoyed it, I might pick up uh, Frankenstein and Baghdad. I still want to do a Pacific Islands random number generator though. So let's spin on that. I picked a spinny one for this one. And I have newer. So, um, not gonna lie, I do not have high hopes that I will find a book for this country, but I will certainly try and we'll see where we're going from here and you'll just see in my April wrap-up, uh, actually May wrap-up, which country I ended up picking for May. So, that was it for countries. Let's do the series TBR, which I have to get better at because for March I once again did not read the series. I picked the Murderbot ones and I got the book for my library as like on Libby but then my hold ran out and then my Libby app is sometimes kind of weird where it won't take my library card and so I have to like delete it and then log in again and then I forgot my password and it was a whole thing and I was too exhausted and so I didn't pick up the thing. Anyway, for... April, I picked The Dark Gods by Tara Sim. Give me a second. I do actually already own the next book, which is The Midnight Kingdom. And the first book was The Dark Gods or something along The City of Dusk. <laughs> the Dark Gods is the series name. Uh, the first book was The City of Dusk. And yeah, I'm excited for this one. I actually really enjoyed book one. And I also put this one on my r slash fantasy TBR bingo. So, you know. It's gonna be good and I'll see maybe I can pick this because I'm doing the tomes and treasures readathon maybe I can pick this for something but yeah so that was enough rambling already just for the intro let's get into my statistics for April as always, I have my story graph statistics. I read a total of eight books in March and I DNF'd one more. My moods were adventurous, emotional, dark, reflective, mysterious, lighthearted and hopeful. So that's some moods you don't often see. One book I read in March was judged as medium paced, one as fast paced and the rest, well, no, one book was judged as slow paced, one as fast paced and the rest as medium paced by Storygraph. Then in terms of page numbers, 40% of the books I read were over, no, not over, under 300 pages. Huh. Very interesting, that is. 30% were over 500 pages and 30% between 300 and 500 pages. It feels like there's something messed, oh, actually no. Actually, that's all right. So, whatever. <laughs> then I only read fi fiction books in 
March genres were fantasy, historical, middle grade, LGBTQIA short stories and literary. 30% of 13% of what I read was digital and 88% was print. I did actually only finish one digital book this month or last month. Then 87%, so about 90% of the books that I read were in English and two books that I read were in German. In terms of my star ratings, I had one 3.25 star, I had one 3.5 star, one 4 star, one 4.25 star, one 4. 7 5 star and 2 5 stars. However, of those 2 5 stars, one of them was a reread because I had one reread in March and then the rest were first time reads. In terms of representation, let me just very quickly fumble through this. I had one, two books this month that were written by BIPOC authors. There were quite a few books this month that had characters with disabilities and mental health issues. However, with those mental health issues, I would say a lot of that was trauma and a lot of that wasn't necessarily or isn't necessarily explicit within the book. It's just if you read enough about traumatized characters that have a lot of trauma responses, then obviously you kind of you kind of start seeing that. And then in terms of queer, I had one, two, two books with queer characters, I think. But yeah, let me get into it and let me start with my DNF. I DNF Defiant by Brandon Sanderson. I still wanted to somehow finish the Skyward series. Defiant is the fourth and last book. I started this on audio because I honestly don't want to buy it and my library didn't have it. So yeah, I started it on audio. And not gonna lie, I got about a third of the book into it and I was just... I didn't care. I was so bored. I didn't care. There was also some really weird thing that I, I actually wanted to... What's it called? To research that because apparently in this universe now the earth is gone but the moon still circles around the sun and I'm like that doesn't seem scientifically correct but also I would have to research that. What is Skyward about? Skyward is about Spencer who is a young girl, it's a YA space opera, who is a young girl living on this planet where basically the topmost thing that you can be is a fighter pilot and she has always wanted to be that. The reason why this is such a prestigious thing to be is because this planet is basically constantly attacked by aliens. And so Spencer wants to make it into the academy to become a fighter pilot. However, the thing is that her dad is the worst thing you can be or was the worst thing you can be in this society. He was a coward and because of that they don't want to let her into the academy. However, Spencer will not let that stop her. And so the story is about Spencer. I really enjoyed the first two books. I also enjoyed both of them on reread, even though I reread both of them in 2021 and I was already slightly more iffy about Sanderson at that point. I still really enjoyed the first two books. However, when I read the third book, when that came out, I really didn't enjoy that. I gave it, I think, two stars or 2.5 stars. And yeah, time's too precious to read books you're not interested in. So that is why I ultimately decided to DNF that. Next, I have my reread and that was Ink Death by Cornelia Funke. This is the third and until recently final book in the Ink Heart series, which follows Maggie who is, well, it follows technically Maggie and her dad. And Maggie at the beginning of the series is 12 years old. She has always lived her life just together with her dad who is a bookbinder until one day a stranger appears on a rainy night and he brings secrets with them. Secrets that she didn't know about her father and when they decide, like when her father decides to just up and leave the next day with like taking Maggie with him up and leave 
Maggie realizes that there's something to her father's history that she hasn't known about before and yeah things come to a head and shit starts happening. That's the book basically or the first book and this third book is so interesting to me because this is a middle grade series right however in this third book our technically main character Maggie really plays more of a supporting role she still has quite a few POV chapters however she is not the person driving the story along those people are actually the adults in the story which for a middle grade is just so incredibly interesting and like I had reread both Ink Heart and Ink Spell. Actually, I don't know if the third one is Ink Spell, but like the first and second book I had reread multiple times when I was a teen and also a little bit older. However, I only read the third book when it first came out and I remember not enjoying it as much as the first two books, which, you know, if you go at it from a teenager's mind, or a young teen's mind that kind of makes sense right because the character that you're supposed to relate to and that you're supposed to see the story through the eyes of plays a lot less of a role however rereading this as an adult i thought this book was amazing and i loved how much commentary there was like on storytelling stuff and everything there's a lot of ribbing of an author in the story and how he treats female characters terribly in his stories. I love Dustfinger. I love Mo as a character. I love the Black Prince. There's like so many characters in this that I absolutely loved and adored and it was just, it was amazing. And I also really liked the finale, which I think seemed very anticlimactic to me, like if I remember correctly when I first read it. However, reading it now, the ending is just, it's perfect and I love it. Like, I love this reread so much and I now have already started the new one. So the next book I want to talk about is Tower of Thorns by Juliet Merrily, which is the second book in the Blackthorn and Grimm series. This series follows the two titular characters, Blackthorn and Grimm. However, Grimm really is the main, uh, not Grimm, Blackthorn really is the main character. So the story really revolves more around Blackthorn than Grimm. The two of them met in prison. Blackthorn's backstory is that she was part of an uprising against a local laird and she's about to be executed at the beginning of the first novel. However, the day before her execution, she's visited by a fey lord who promises her that he will set her free. However, there's three things that she has to promise. First, she has to move to this village up north. Second, she is not allowed to say no to anyone coming to her with a request for help. And third, she has to like swear off vengeance. And those three things she has to do for the next seven years. So after that, she's free, but for those seven years, she is bound by those promises to the fear lord. And so Blackthorn does that, Blackthorn moves north, Grimm comes with her and each of the books kind of follows the two of them as they build a life again and as they obviously have to help someone in every single of the books. It's actually very interesting because like both Blackthorn and Grimm have first person narration chapters in each of the books, which you know I'm not a fan of. However, the two voices are so distinctly different from each other that I don't necessarily mind it in these books. And then there's always a third POV person that's written in third person narration. And that is usually the person that the two of them are supposed to help. And there's also always some type of fame mystery or magical mystery involved. I enjoyed this. I just really like Julian Marillet's writing. However, I found myself not as engaged in this one compared to the first one, which is why I only gave it 3.25 stars. But I just, yeah, Julie Marley is just a comfort author for me. I know that when I pick up one of her books, I'm gonna have a good time. And so, yeah, I can highly recommend her books. So next for my 3.5 star books, the first of those I have is Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call, which is the first book in the, what are they called? 
I forgot what the series is called. The series also has a name and it's gonna be four books, but I don't know what the series is called right now. So this series is set in a world where people who are disabled and people who are born with disabilities especially are seen as servants of this like evil god type creature. And our main character who is born at the beginning of the story is born without an arm. However, he is saved by a priest and this priest hides him, hides that he only has one arm by like stealing a magical prosthesis for him. And so our main character grows up under this priest's eye and within this kind of order cult thing of people that are servants to a good god and these people also think that magic is part of the realm of the bad god so they constantly send people out called avatars to steal magical items and to bring it back to the monastery basically. And so this first book is about how our main character wants to earn his title as an avatar of this order and also hide that he only has one arm so he's not gonna be killed. I... Mm, how to talk about this? Like I don't think this is a bad book in any way shape or form. I just think it's not exactly the book for me. I still gave it more funnily enough than this one but yeah it's that just shows you how arbitrary ratings can sometimes be because obviously I'm a lot more critical with this because I know I have loved plenty of Juliet Merrily books before but anyway so the reason why I think this one isn't for me is because the main character is this trope that I don't particularly enjoy and that is when we follow a young character typically a young boy or younger boy teen boy who just has his dream and like wants to work towards this dream and wants to ignore everything else happening around him because that's just so important to him and he doesn't want to to like need to look at everything else. I would also say like the vibes that this character gives me not in his characterization because the characters are very different but like in the types of roles they play within the story is very similar to Fitz and I just don't typically become very engaged with those characters those are the characters where you really have to fall in love with the main character otherwise the story just doesn't make that much sense to read. It's also the same thing kind of with Name of the Wind, obviously, where you have like these one very important main characters where you have to feel for them, have to empathize with them to, you know, really properly enjoy the story. And that just didn't happen with me. I just didn't have a connection with the main character. I found him quite annoying a lot of times, especially when he was mooning after this girl. I also, by the way, did not particularly like the female characterizations or the way female characters were treated in this story because pretty much you have one named important female character and that female character, the way she is described and characterized is just not very charitable, I would say. She's kind of bigoted and I don't know where things are going with her in future books so I will leave judgment on that for the future because I have learned from The Grace of Kings where my main criticism of that book was that there were so few important female characters and that series ended up with like some of the best female characters out there so I will leave judgment on that. So yeah, I enjoyed it. The writing was pretty basic, not gonna lie, like the writing style was pretty basic. So my battery just gave out on me so I hope everything was caught but I think the last thing I said was that I will continue on with the series. I am interested in seeing where the second book goes. However, for this first one, just be aware that you're probably, like, you, you will have to probably enjoy the main character or fall in love with the main character to fully engage with the story, which is fine. That's not a criticism, but you know, if you don't like those type of characters, then you're not gonna enjoy the book as much. And that sadly was the case for me. 
The next 3.5 star book I had was a book where I was struggling so much at the end um, whether or not I should give it 3.5 stars or less. And the book I'm talking about is Sister Song with Lucy Holland. The main reason for that is that the ending is very unique and does not at all go where these type of stories usually go and very much breaks with tradition. However, I am not quite sure, still not quite sure if it's done in a way where I enjoy the ending or where I don't enjoy the ending. So yeah, that's fun. Anyway, Sister Song is the story of two sisters and their brother and it's a historical fantasy. All three of them are connected to the land, however the magic of the land is slowly vanishing because of Christian influence and they might have to reconnect to the land, however, or find ways to reconnect to the land if they want to overcome the threat that is posed by the Saxons coming. First of all, for Sister Song for the title, if any of you are like me and will go like, mm, I'm kind of confused um, after beginning the story because we have three main characters and the three main characters are two sisters and their trans brother. And I originally thought that the title Sister Song was in relation to like the three sisters, which obviously aren't three sisters. However, that's not it. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway, Sister Song is actually just about two of the sisters. Like there's a literal sister song happening, appearing in the story. So what were my thoughts on this book? First of all, I loved one of the characters from the beginning. It was the trans brother that I really, really enjoyed from the beginning. I really enjoyed how he was like revealed, quote unquote, as trans because it was very clear from the first or second chapter that he was trans. The way that was revealed was like a lot, like on the one hand, because he doesn't like wearing dresses. So he's always dressed in trousers and his mother's always like, you can't do that, you're a lady, da 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 da. Um, however, that wasn't the only thing. The other thing was like the unwillingness or the not seeing the need of taking part in cultural ceremonies that include women or that are for women, where he very much always took himself out from that. So I really enjoyed that part. However, be aware also, like, you have three POVs from the three siblings. All of the POVs are first person narration, which I personally, once again, I don't like it if there's multiple characters first person narration because 99% of the people aren't like Juliet Mary Lee and give them different voices or can give them different voices. And in this one, it was very much like three absolutely the same voices. However, because you get narration from the point of view of all of the siblings, for most of the book, because like, you know, the sisters know there's something strange or something different about their brother. However, they still see their brother as a sister throughout most of the book. So the first two thirds of the story, if it's not a POV chapter from the brother's point of view, you will see him getting misgendered constantly. <laughs> Uh, I won't say dead named because it's only really in the last few chapters that he does choose his own name and until then he's like he takes his time choosing his own name and until then it's like it's never like he's not fine or it, at least it didn't come across like that for me that he's not fine being called by his dead name. However, yeah, that's just a thing that's in the book uh, just because of how the book is structured. But Still, the brother was absolutely my favorite character and I would say he's kind of the main character in a the story. Then there was one of the sisters who I was kind of like meh about and who I ended up really hating and I hated her chapters and then there was one sister that I really didn't like at the beginning that I kind of fell in love with towards the end. So that's as far as the sisters go and yeah. Obviously, I just said that I love the brother. Uh, so character-wise, yeah, I did enjoy it. Then, as I said, writing-wise, I didn't really enjoy it that much. And I have to say, overall, I was a little bit disappointed because these are the type of stories that I usually eat up 
as I said, like, these are the type of stories that I feel really, really comfortable with. However, the three-person, first-person narration just really kind of, yeah messed things up for me a little bit. Next I have my 2.5 star read which was my read around the world book for March and the country that I had was Algeria which I actually said in my February wrap-up I think it was no not February January wrap-up that um, I only remember reading Camus the stranger but that he's French which Technically, I guess he's also Algerian because he was born and raised in Algeria. However, he's, you know, colonial French Algeria, so I still wouldn't count that. And I did in the end decide, however, to read the book that's kind of written as an answer to The Stranger, which is The Meursault Investigation by Kamel Daoud. This was published in 2013 and it is written from the perspective of the brother of the Arab who was killed by the main character in The Stranger. I actually really want to reread The Stranger now because I only read it in French and I have to be honest didn't understand that much uh, past like the really bare bones plot and so it's like this is the brother kind of going through life and philosophizing a lot about how his brother was treated by the narrative, how the killer is treated by the narrative, how uh, the killer like gets this kind of reverence now and talking also about colonialization, talking about language and just a lot of stuff in there. Also talking about religion, a lot of stuff. When I started the book I 100% thought this would be a 5 star however the reason why I only gave it only gave it 4.25 stars is because there were like a handful of like references in this book to women and how women were talked about in this book especially like the woman in The Stranger which there's this whole thing in The Stranger where the, the death happens because if you don't know The Stranger is the story of a person at his kind of process, I guess, or, or judging, I don't know how you call it, like um, where you go to be judged by a judge. I can't do English right now, I'm sorry. Like the reason that's thought is because like he killed this man because he was fighting with another man about a prostitute and so the way this prostitute is talked about in this book and kind of made invisible was something that I didn't particularly like which was why I gave it 4.25 stars however everything else I absolutely loved I loved the language of the book and so yeah I can really really recommend it I think there's a lot of really important stuff being said in this book yeah I'm really happy I read it and that's one more country ticked off the box or the list I guess. <laughs> Next I have a book that I will try to talk about just very very quickly and briefly and that is The Queen's Bargain by Anne Bishop which once again I don't understand why it took me a whole year to finally pick this book up. This is the 12th book in the Black Jewel series. Like actually I would say the Black Jewel series is like the original trilogy then you have two short story collections, one spin-off book, one trilogy duology like one duology with a prequel kind of and then you have the final trilogy now so it's like not one continuous narrative however we do keep following all the same characters but because it's not a continuous narrative I'm not gonna talk about what the series is about right now because that wouldn't make sense for this book what I just want to talk about very quickly is that like whenever I pick up a new Black Jewels book I'm always kind of hesitant by now because obviously the Black Jewels were my favorite series for a very long time and I would say even now there is not a series out there that means as much to me emotionally as the Black Jewel series. However, as I have become older and as I have become a more critical reader, I have become more critical especially of the world building in this series. And so because I know I'm more critical now, I'm always scared that when I go into these books again that I will be too critical. And every time I pick them up again and I'm like, I feel like I don't have to worry 
because I still fly through these books, these characters still make me cry. I like, it feels like coming home to me. And that's why also I don't want to talk too much about this as a whole, as a book, as a story, because I don't feel like I can talk about it. I do not read these books and the new books for the story. I do not care what the story is. I care about the characters and I care about seeing those characters and seeing them interact with each other. And so, yeah, I'm just very happy that I have this now and I will definitely read the next book more quickly. Like this year and the shop only came out with a short story collection and there's I think three short stories in there from the Black Jewels and I know that at least one of them I already know and the other two I'm not sure about to be honest but yeah so I'm gonna start this one soon and then my last five star read was Tales of the Celestial Kingdom by Su Lin Tan this is just a short story collection of, I think, six short stories in total, or seven, in connection to the Celestial Kingdom duology, which I absolutely loved. And this gave me exactly what I needed from a short story collection, because this just, you know, it just added more flavor, but it didn't add, like, lore or plot or whatever. It didn't change anything. It just, you know, it just give you a, li a little bit, a little bit of a continuation, a little bit of a look into some of the characters, into some of the POVs, because the first two books are um, written, that's what I wanted to say, because the first two books are written just from Xin Ying's perspective, and so you don't get to see the perspectives of other characters, and so you have a couple of chapters in here of stuff happening there from other character's perspectives, you have the backstory of her parents, and you have a little bit of stuff of what happened after the second book that was already hinted at at the end of the second book. And also, like, just look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Anyway, I absolutely loved it, I absolutely adored it, I can highly recommend it. And with that being said, that was it for my wrap up. If you have any thoughts on any of the books I mentioned, please leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club where we read one adult fantasy book written by a woman or genderqueer person per month, which let me just grab it real quick. In March, no, April, we're reading Fathom Folk will be left linked down below, so go and check those out, and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!